racism continues to exist in our communities. Racism is what makes us see the other with suspicion or to attribute negative characteristics to an entire group of people. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to Just That Music and Life. Today, I'm just chiming in. I am going to run some errands. As you see, I'm in the car and I'm just weighing in on some, I guess, some racial inequality type situation. Like with everything going on today with the uh, um, Black Lives Matter, you know, we don't stop to think where does this stem from? Like there are problems, but a lot of the time you have to get to the root of the problem before you can fix the problem. Great, no, I'm starting to rain. I want to talk about systemic racism and like what it is and where it started. Now we look at black people and they see, you know, an aggressive person, they see a lost person, they see people in the ghetto, they see people that live, you know, pretty much lower class. And nobody stops to think where it came from or where it started. So when you have a black person and you assume or what the media is telling you, like Trump always wants to call out fake news. So why is it that when we protest, it's called a riot? Why is it that when we protest, it's, you know, it's we're complaining about something? Racism against a group of people. That's what we're talking about. You know, this evil manifests itself in our individual thoughts and also in the workings of our society itself. Nobody can argue with that. Today's continuing inequalities in education, housing, employment, wealth, and representation and leadership positions are rooted in our country's shameful history of slavery and systemic racism. Okay, so let's just talk about the unemployment rates from African Americans to Caucasian. If you have an unemployed African American with a degree, with the same equal education or sometimes more than a Caucasian, why is it that because of our, our resumes and the black names on our resumes, our resumes are looked over? So therefore, it looks as though we are not educated. It looks as though we're not trying to look for jobs. It looks as though we just don't want to work because the numbers are higher. But nobody stops to say our numbers are higher due to non-hiring of African Americans. Take my name for instance, it's Swalanda. When you hear that name, you don't know what nationality I am. But if you hear Susan, you know that Susan is absolutely, most likely, probably a Caucasian. So you'll give her a call to come in for an interview before you would give the Swalanda a call. So when you have those situations, the unemployment rate looks higher. Let's go to the next one. Minority home ownership. Why is it that a bank will give a white person of a lower class a loan before they give a black person of a higher class a loan and by class I just mean the money that you're making if you're living and you're making 50 grand the bank will give you a loan to me making a hundred grand simply because of my color of my skin so when you look at why black people are not in certain neighborhoods why we're not why we don't live in certain places one it's because we're looked over for the jobs so if we're looked over for the jobs, we don't have the employment. Then we're underpaid. In the United States, median wealth for white households are 10 times greater than for black households and eight times greater than for Hispanic households. So when you don't have the income, you can't live in the neighborhood. If you can't live in the neighborhood, then you have to go in the neighborhood where you have the income. And there you start the segregation. There you start, oh, black people live in the ghetto. Oh, white people live over here. Oh, black people live over there. It's not because, but the society will put it out, the news will put it out. You know, they'll make it seem as though we're just this group of people that are uneducated. We're just ghetto. We just don't have, we don't want anything better for ourselves. And the only place we can live is in the ghetto. Whereas that's not true. That's not what we are. That's not what we're made of. And that's where the unfairness comes in at. This is where society needs to stop and we need to band together and we need to stop this systemic racism because it is what shuts us down. It starts all the way back from slavery. We didn't get 40 acres in a mule. They were let loose as slaves. Okay, you're free now. You're free to do what? Wander the streets, wander the roads. There's no, they didn't give any money. 
They didn't give you any food. You're on the road with your children and your family and your little bit of belongings because you didn't have anything. You were a slave. So what happens there? You go back to being a slave. So you have generations and generations and generations of that same mind frame where we weren't gaining riches. White people were gaining riches off of our backs while we were being slaves. So we don't have the money to trickle down to our children. Like white people have the money to trickle down to their children. So we're constantly generations upon generations working, working, working our behinds off just to make our ends meet because we don't have that wealth. Let's talk about the criminal system. So in the criminal system, you have blacks, you have whites, you have Latinos, you have all races. But African Americans, Latinos, and Native Americans are disproportionately affected through every stage of the criminal justice system. Despite the evidence, despite the evidence that different racial and ethnic groups commit crimes at roughly the same rate. But when it's put out there, it's put out there that we are the aggressive ones. We are the ones that are that are committing all these crimes. Like white people don't commit any crimes and you barely see them on the news. So this is what's put out there. Take Amy Cooper. She was the aggressor in the video. The gentleman was asking her, please don't come close to me. Please don't come near me. She was running up to him, approaching him in his face, ready to do whatever it is. But as a black man, he doesn't have the power to say anything or do anything unless he really wants to go to jail or be killed. Going to jail now at this rate is, an, is like, oh my God, at least I went to jail. I wasn't killed. My life wasn't stolen away from me because that's, that's what's happening. Like your life is just snuffed away from you and then that's it. And our lives don't matter. How do you take a race of people and make them slaves in the first place? You're making a whole race of people slaves. So you own a person. If that is not the evilest thing that I could think of in my mind, but like I said, I wrote a black history poem. And like I said in my poem, but if you needed a kidney, it wouldn't have a color. If you needed a kidney, my kidney would be just as right as rain if I was a match for a white person. Heart transplant, bone marrow, whatever it is, then it has no color. Then there's no divide. So how do you take a person, we're not dogs, we're not animals. How do you take a human being and make them into a slave and then build a society where this carries on so much that we're at the bottom of the totem pole, the way we're treated, the way that we're profiled? Why is it that white cops police black neighborhoods? White cops that live way out in Long Island police black neighborhoods in Queens and the Bronx and Brooklyn in, 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 in the five boroughs. Why is that? Why don't we have cops in our communities that care about our communities? Why is our budget and our taxpayer dollars going to pay these white cops to come into our communities to lock us up, throw us to the ground? They're not trying to come into the communities and make a bond with the community and see what the people need. They're coming into the community to arrest to conquer, to divide, to make look like we're just some hardened criminals that live in the ghetto. Why not put police officers in these communities that actually care about these communities, that come from the community, that has come from a community that's similar to the community that they are now policing? You put these white racist cops in the black communities, but yet no, you want the community to love the police? That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen and you know it's never going to happen because there's no way you can put somebody in a situation where they hate the race of people that they are policing and the people are going to have a bond or feel any type of relationship with this person. Let's talk about our schools, our black schools, our children, and the education that they receive. When I was younger, my mom bust me out to an all-white school to get a better education than where I lived in Queens. Why? Because our schools are funded by the taxes on our housing. So if we live in low-income houses and our house, the house that you live in, where there'd be two bedroom, three bedroom, the taxes on it is low, the area is low, all the incomes are low, so everything in that neighborhood is low. We can't afford to fund our schools. 
We can't afford to give the schools the money that it needs because that's where the money comes from. It comes from the taxes in the neighborhood. But then again, if you have a white neighborhood and you live in some place, you know, where rich white people live or wealthier white people live, then of course their schools are going to have the computers, the books, the teachers. Our teachers are underpaid. Their teachers are paid more than our teachers. We have no computers. We have no books. We have no new technology. Our labs are run down. Everything is old. Meanwhile, if you go to a white school, everything is new. They have everything that they need and then some. They're getting laptops. They're getting iPads. They're getting everything that their students need. Yet and all, we can't even get a decent supply of books. The money needs to come from the government so that all schools are funded equally. Black people have to tell their children, look, you go to this white school and you let them know that you are just as smart as them. We have to tell our children to speak a certain way, to behave in a certain way. And not because we're bad or the way that we behave is, is, is wrong, but because white people don't understand it. So we have to conform to them. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, when they're taking drugs, their teenagers are acid up and the neighborhoods are... are opioid out of here when it's their neighborhoods with drug problems it's an epidemic when it's a black neighborhood with a drug problem it's just a ghetto it's just crack it's just this they're worthless let's not help their their people get any better that's not okay so you judge us by the things that have been bought on us you judge us by things we have no control over you bring the drugs into our neighborhood. You get our people addicted. You get the mothers and fathers addicted. You get the guys selling drugs. Why? Because they can't get the jobs. Why? Because their name is Raheem. Why? Because the big companies won't hire them. After they've went to college, they've earned a degree. They've spent money. They have student loans like everybody else. But yet, no, you can't get a job paying you enough to pay off your student loans. You start to see the trickle effect here? It just trickles on down. So here you have these segregated neighborhoods. We have blacks over here, Chinese over here, um, whites over here, and nobody understands each other's culture because they don't live with each other. When you have these neighborhoods and everybody's divided, you don't get the opportunity or the chance to mingle with someone from a different culture, from a different background than yours, that can make that half a whole. New York is a big staring part. I live in New York City, but it's a big staring part, but it's so segregated. You have the Italians over here, you have the whites over here, you have the Greeks over here, the Asians over here, the Jews over here, the blacks over here, the Latinos over here. It's like, what are we doing? Where, where's the equality? When you have all the blacks and Latinos in the lower budget, lower income neighborhoods, why? Why won't you give us the jobs? Why won't you give us the same opportunities? White people don't have to tell their children to act differently because we have to conform to them. Why do we have to conform to them? Because they're the ones owning the jobs. They're the ones that have a constant, constant me in our necks. It's a constant me in our necks. So I'm just saying, you know, food for thought, something to think about. We all need to protest together. We all need to stand as one. We all need to stop turning a blind eye and acting like we don't have this issue and this issue hasn't been here since slavery and it hasn't trickled down because of slavery. And that's the reason why blacks and minorities are where they are, mainly African-Americans. We were brought over here unwillingly on a ship and to do what? To be your slave? Every time I say that, I get choked up and I get angry and I want to just like scream. How do you have a race of people, human beings, because their skin is brown, they have the right to be your slave? But then you want to not have any ownership of that? Everybody want to act like they don't know what's going on? And I'm not saying it's all white people, but you know who you are and you know where you are. And it ain't cool. That's not cool. It makes no sense that we have to stand in the streets protest, scream equality, hold up signs to be heard. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying if we get together as a people, y'all, you know, and, and become as a one, there's strength in numbers. That's what I'm saying. We can learn from each other. 
We can learn from each other's different experiences. And we can stop the hate. We can stop the racism. We can stop everything that's going on. We can stop this. It's in our power. It's in our hands. So let's make that happen. Anyway, you guys, thanks for joining me again. Subscribe to my channel. Ring the bell. And become part of the family. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.